Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric and Cedric here. It's your wrestling commentary, answering viewers. And yep, those are Cedric's books. Find them, check them out. Awesome. Some action packed, some raunchy, some is like, what? Too real for certain people to deal. So, all right. We're going to get on into this right here. So we got a... Uh, Zemo again, you know, y'all can join in. It's all right. I ain't gonna bite your head off. You know, I haven't bit, you know, Zemo's head off yet. I bite. No, I ain't bit it off yet. As soon as he does not say I'm king of everything that he knows and loves, then I'll get him. I bite. <laughs> <laughs> so, he says, rest in peace, Sika. Yeah, Sika was... I thought it was Sika. Sika. I said Sika. So At first says, I said Sika. Okay. But I said Sika. Um, that dude, I remember, I was like, if I ever see him in real life, I'm running. <laughs> As a kid, I was scared out of my mind when I saw him. <laughs> um, I was like, oh, that, mm -mm. And I'm starting to think I saw him when I went to wrestling once. But I don't want to mix him up with somebody else. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I just remember an Islander team, not the Islanders maybe, but they wore the, the, the dark blue with white flowers on it. They were barefoot with black ankle wraps. I, their hair was pulled back, slick but bushy, where it wasn't tied down. I don't, but they look like people you don't mess with though. <laughs> they don't, you don't mess with them, you just, no, nah, you leave them alone. If they want to rent a car, be like, it's on the house. Just take it. Don't, don't, don't hurt me. You know, they give you money. You be like, no, I'll take your money. I need in good favor so you don't kill me. Just, Just drop it off here. Can you do that for me, please? Yeah. So, he says thoughts on SmackDown. I ain't going to lie. When I first read thoughts on SD, I was like, you forgot the word card at the end. But, okay, okay. <laughs> thoughts on the SD card. Okay. Well, they're great. <laughs> you know, you use them to save and load. They're, they're good for that stuff. <laughs> You know, just, I, 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 I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> okay, so he says, um, you would think that with, hold up, let me, I think I scrolled too far. Oh, I've done something wrong. Okay, okay, never mind. He says, you would think that with Triple H in charge, we would see less stupid BS. I know change takes time. But you would think that someone with years of experience in the wrestling business like Triple H would have enough common sense to present the new bloodline as a true threat instead of having them get chased off by the faces every other week. If they want to push Solo, they need to make him look competent. <laughs> and there you go. He's, he's just Sonny Corleone. Yep. But it's it's good though. It is. Because you have to show how he is so how can I say in needing a, such a warmonger that he doesn't have true direction. And because he doesn't have true direction, they can never rise to prosperity. So if and I hope he can but if Roman Reigns come back or someone can come back and challenge for a tribal chief, then they can prove how he has failed that group repeatedly. You know? Yeah. What? I think that it's going to become more than evident very quickly <laughs> that um, especially... Jacob Fatu that the quote unquote henchman outshined the hench. Yeah. 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 But that's natural to people. Like, okay, who looks stronger? They should be in charge. Because humans naturally, the human animal has a natural might makes right about them. But you can look strong and still be worthless. Uh, what was the wolf-looking dude who on AEW? I don't know. 
He was. He used to be with Marshall. What the hell? Colorado. What about him? He looked dangerous, but ain't nobody, not nobody, said he should be the leader of nothing. Yeah. Vito Colleone. He was the leader, right? Yeah. He owned, he ran that mob and owned all that stuff, right? Because he had the brains. He had the brains. Nobody else did. And he made the uh, he made the moves that needed to be made at the right time to take advantage. And Solo ain't doing none of that. Solo ain't doing nothing but changing clothes, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got on different clothes and I lower my head when I look at you. Here, here's what I want people. There's two things I want people to understand. Number one, I do want Solo Sokoa to succeed. I do want him to get better. I do want him to lead them properly. I do want him to make it. I don't I don't want him to fail. I don't want to keep talking about how he suck. I want him to get better, but I don't need him to get better to my personal specifications, but I need for them to present him in a way that I can say, that guy's it. That guy, he don't look tough, but without him, they've got nothing. And all he does is present him. They only present him as a brute. But the problem is everyone that he's leading can out brutalize him. Yeah. And that's where they are messing up. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing I want everybody to just you got to put your, you, you got to sit down. You got to you got to you got to put your seatbelt on. All right. Get some kind of Dwayne Johnson bottle to pee in. <laughs> get you some shades because you went for a long ride because this thing with the bloodline they have to make sure it stretches long enough to give Solo Sokoa a history of either messing up or improving or a mixture thereof that can be misconstrued they have to give him a history he just finalized he's in charge right now this is the actual beginning of Solo Sokoa's reign. Yeah, he's not. This is the well. actual. Is he didn't. He didn't. He he accumulated it with a hostile takeover. Mm -hmm. That's important to know. It's a hostile takeover. Once you finish your hostile takeover, now you got to take inventory. You've got to understand who you're dealing with and how they can be utilized. So they got to go through that process. They have to do this little by little, and then slowly. Hopefully show that he's doing that taking inventory and then saying this is what I want y'all to do He's got to task his people with goals Even if he was like even if he was like Jacob you are going to be the one to defeat Cody Rhodes You will take that belt from him You know Gorillas of destiny you're gonna get the tag belts and then he could go after something else if he wanted to or nothing at all. And he's like, I lead these champions. I led them to what they have. That's what he could do. He could do that. But then wouldn't he be a glorified manager? Not. I mean, if you're a leader, i am be straight up with you. Anyone can look through history. Any level, any good leader is nothing but a glorified manager. Leaders have to know who can do what and then where to put them. And if their troop size is too big, that's when you get lieutenants, generals, and others. Or in the business, managers, supervisors, and whatnot that, can, that you trust that can get it done. Look, I need this person to do that. You get those people out there to do it. And then that's it. You you task them to get the job done that you need done, and you trust that they're going to get it done. But his group is small. It's basically four horsemen level now. I think that you have labeled him quite appropriately because everything, and when you call him Santa Corleone, because everything that he's done is, you know, like a bulldozer, and a bulldozer does not fine-tune or finesse. No, it don't. They just mow stuff down. And then as soon as you break the treads off or run out of gas, that's it. And he then got rid of what? Well, Got rid of he's all, but he got rid of Heyman a long time ago because Heyman been scared to death for about two months. 
and Heyman and, uh, and and not able to function. <laughs> and I thought that was masterful because what Heyman did was he put that group over. He had to solidify in a finite amount of time that these are exceedingly dangerous people. And he did that with everybody. He just No, he did it with Solo. With Solo, you have to go back. I believe that he was scared. I'm just not sure what he was scared of. Okay. You, you you are lucky. I have had to be around people that were seemingly like Jacob Fatu. All right. Like the monster got out the cage and you realize there's no wall between you and it. Yeah, I get Jacob. I even get Tama and, and Loa. I get that. I just don't get the fear of Sokoa. Sokoa is a fighter, a wrestler. Just in general, just because he can do that? In general. Okay. In general. He's a wrestler. He's a fighter. Okay? He's strong. Would I want to fight him personally, just arbitrarily? No. I wouldn't. But I don't think I'd be afraid of him either. Paul Heyman, he don't do that stuff. That's not him. He is literally the the, the Chinese pencil pushing guy in the movies. What you say? You got words? You know I slap you, right? My boss don't like you. What do you think we're gonna do to you, huh? Mind your manners, punk. <laughs> and you're like, I will Ugh! But as soon as the boss says, You're on your own, you've messed up too many times, and the one that that pencil pusher them pissed off, stand up. That pencil pusher is pissing. He's all it's, it's over. He knows he's gonna die. He's gonna be the long out death scene. Okay, has has Sokoa uh, brutalized Heyman at some point in the past that we're not aware of? No. Remember, remember falling down. Yeah. Has he hurt you or the kid? No. Has he laid hands on you? No. But it, he gives the air that he will ruin everything you got. He will come down on you like a ton of bricks. He never has, but he's scary. That's what Sokoa was. And what they did last time on SmackDown, that was it. He, he, brutal, he was the first one to lay hands on Heyman. That was mm, he had to be the one to do it. And then, after he put him down, then he started calling shots. Go up top, Jacob. Jacob hit the headbutt. Get him outside the ring. They got him outside the ring. He got it. You, hey, drop him on the table. So Tama had to, okay, y'all, we do it this way, we do it that way. Get him up. Whoa, this dude ain't light. Got him up. And I think Sokoa said, dump him. And then they dumped him. He led that. And that was after basically bow down to me. And they're like, I love you, man. You are my tribal chief. And he got that. He's got the acknowledgement from them. He orchestrated the attack on Haman. The basically untouchable, even in the viewer's eyes. Like he's old. He's extremely out of weight. Uh, he's, he's well overweight. He's going to, you know, you attack him. He might have a heart attack or something. People were scared about that. So when they finally did it, that got him over. That got Sokoa over as, okay, this guy is potentially as dangerous as the others look. Are we sure that got him over? I hope so. <laughs> With me, I'm like, okay, y'all did something. Let's see where you go. That's where I'm at. Y'all did something. Let's see where you go. And then they did the next week SmackDown, where, which should have been the last one, my bad, which was last week. Where at the end of the program, it was a pre-tape of him talking and issuing his challenge to Roman Reigns if he so chooses to try to get the title of Tribal Chief back. Oh, okay. So, but he did it. It was well done. I liked it. But they, they weren't on the show? No. It was, a pre, it was a pre-tape and they just ran it when the show was nearly over. That was a mistake. Why? Just like you said, he. Okay, so the whole point is to get him over in this position. Yeah, he ain't come. He ain't gonna. He ain't gonna come out to the ring 
And do no, they had to have the whole. They made it dark, red, kept him inish and out the shadows. They made it look menacing. They did a. They did a good job. They it's, should have capitalized on him decimating Paul Heyman. They should have had them out there. They should. He should have had a match where he messed up some really good enhancement guy, and then had his team fuck them up. I get what you're saying, but they can't do that. Right. I'm going to tell you why that would be a mistake. Because you're going to beat up and jump on some enhancement dude or some low-level person. It makes you look weak. Well, you have to they're go. Not, they're not going to let them get a hold of Cody and them. They, get, they lose. I'm working on that right now. That's money in the bank I'm working on. Okay. That's, that's the three-on-three. You know, I, I, I'm at Seth Rollins in the ring right now, and he's going to go against Damian Priest and probably beat him and take the belt, and Priest got to leave. I just want to be close to you. I got you singing that. Because it was a dude back in the 80s named Maxi Priest who sung that song, and every time we mention Damian Priest, I think about that, and I just had to. I hear you. Because the so, song is nice. It's got a nice groove to it. So, you know, that, that <laughs> right there, see, Zemo, that's what I'm talking about. That got us 16 minutes of talk. Good grief. Because it's that interesting. The bloodline situation is that interesting. Is it his finishing move? And his, I don't, I, I, I don't like his finishing move. I don't think it's it honestly, him. It's honestly a, almost a tradition. The Samoan spike, it's almost a tradition. Okay, I get that. If someone had their thumb taped and they reel back like I'm doing reel back and slam that into the side of your neck, you're not getting up. Hey, you can blow on my neck and you're a wrestler. I ain't gonna get up and lay down. It's over. But the point <laughs> I should have trained to be a wrestler. <laughs> God damn it. But <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what it is. That's not hooking me. You because it's all, not getting any No, better. you you like many others are the type. Once something's been presented as meaningless, no matter how great it becomes, you can only see the meaningless. Is That's it? it. It's 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 over. You they they are not gonna convince you that this guy can be a possible threat. And I am trying to wash that away every single time I'm seeing like, okay, I know where you've been. I know what you've done. Let's see where you're going. I want to see where you're going because if I don't see where he's going, if I don't try to update myself with them, then I'm going to be like, y'all have wasted my time making him leader. He really needs to change his hair. He needs to go at this like a woman would trying to completely forget a past with her ex. She changed everything, her wardrobe, her phone, her hair, step out and start anew. He has got to do something about that hair. Yeah. I, I agree. He he, he kind of changed it, but it, it's still the blonde in it, though. Now, he got to get rid of that. I know, I know, he I know. Paul Heyman, on the other hand, he just got powerbombed through a table, so he's got to be gone for about a month. Oh, yeah, go, go, go somewhere to drink some mojitos or something. Now, <laughs> I think it'd be cool for Paul Heyman to come back because he, right before all this happened, he made a rapport with Punk. He made a rapport with Cody. He made a rapport with um, Kevin Owens. Kevin didn't believe him. Cody was fine. CM Punk was right there with him. Mm -hmm. what was that favor you wanted? Please take me with you. <laughs> like, oh, poor man. I wanted to hug him so much. <laughs> Paul Heyman is masterful when it comes to this stuff. He's somebody to carry him away like an officer and a gentleman. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, yeah. So, <laughs> that's for you, Zemo. How much of a movie buff are you? What am I talking about? Carry you away like an officer and a gentleman. So, I am hoping that Paul comes back because he's a babyface now. Mm -hmm. He's been a babyface for about three weeks, minimum. So we'll just see what they do. So just move on with this because he did talk about SmackDown. Um, he says, since LA Knight pinned Logan Paul, 
or the disrespecter of the dead. It confirms that at SummerSlam, Knight will challenge him for, to the U.S. Championship match. And since there is no way Knight is winning money in the bank, <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. So, yeah, and it's, it's obvious. You know, I'm like, Knight ain't going to win that, and I can attest that he didn't. So, let's see, for... <laughs> <laughs> he says, for, say, for shame, Cedra. <laughs> what am I for, for shame about now? I don't know, but you acknowledge that your name my is Cedra. incorrectly said name. Uh, for shame, a person should not be judged by their appearance. Rey Mysterio, Jonathan Gresham, and Brian Danielson are beloved because of their passionate personalities and great ring skills. The fans could care less about their height. Oh, I don't care about their height. It's not, that's not, the, <laughs> the height doesn't bother me. Ray could be two feet tall. It isn't the height. That's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about little men. I'm talking about little men as far as what width. It's men running around here. We're talking about the light. I'm talking about little men, right? And getting tired of the lightweight. Yeah. It is lightweight men running around here with way smaller than your average woman. You could grab them like Looney Tunes dancing the tango, whole hand around the waist. These are some small men. I'll, I'll put it like this for you, Zemo. <laughs> okay. Adam Cole in WWE could beat Sami Zayn. Adam Cole of AEW cannot. It's two different Adam Coles. All right, that's that's what we're getting at. Billy Gunn, older, bigger, could destroy younger, thinner Billy Gunn. That kind of thing. They don't have to be buff. It's not buff that I'm talking about. They Little can... Jack Perry. The ja Young oh, Bucks, Jack Perry. Orange Cassidy. Oh, these little men. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the Rascals in TNA. Yeah. ABC in TNA. Well, not not his partner. The black dude, he's too, he's too, he's too narrow in the waist, man. His partner's yeah. good. He's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, I, Ace Austin. Yes. Is, yeah. He's fine. But that's... He look like he's a grapefruit from being a heavyweight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Chris Bay looks... Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's like, bruh, welcome to bantamweight. It's like you can grab a whole bunch of them and play three card Monty with the uh, a bunch of marbles under the cups and yeah, get out there and wrestle. And they all do about the same thing. All right, come back in. Get another combination. Go out there and wrestle. It'd be the same match over and over again. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. They can be sure. I don't care. Gresham is great. Gresham is Gresham awesome. is awesome. Love some Gresham. It's not height, it's slenderness. I don't care how big you are, I just it's a limit to the slenderness that I can stand. And what and the slenderness that I can stand and how it compels you to wrestle. That's what's important. Because if you're slender and you're not dependent upon leaping from turnbuckle to turnbuckle to get your point across as a wrestler, then you might have something there. You might have some versatility. You might actually know how to wrestle, how to tell a story. But otherwise, it's like, hey, I can be a gymnast on ropes because I'm little. Yep. That's what I'm tired of. So it's not height. It's thinness. If you are not a wrestler and you're offended by that, stop it. Because I'm not talking about you. Yeah, just stop. <laughs> I'm not talking about body <laughs> shaming in life, okay? If you're healthy, fine. If you're not... Try to get healthy. It doesn't make it what size you are, how you look. The, the goal is to be healthy and be able to walk when you're 90. That's the goal. Don't let anybody tell you different. But as far as wrestling is concerned, I just tire of this style that has become popular for really slender wrestlers. It's, 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 they, imagine, they've worn it out. they worn it out. Imagine Trevor Murdoch going to AEW for a spell and losing to Jack Perry. No, it's just not feasible in, in, in no way unless Jack Perry pulls out a weapon and actually uses it should he lose to Trevor Murdoch. 
is, is, is so when Nick Camarado come out and lose to these people, it looks bad, especially when we know Nick Camarado sucks outside the ring when they fight on the floor. Mm hmm. But in the, ring he's, the he's, ring, he's good he's for the good. most part until he has to charge the corner. And I, I'm beginning to think that he just do that because that's his, he is an enhancement guy. Yeah. And AEW doesn't train anyone he to go, train, train anybody. anyone to go and up. And he's obviously a suplexer. Mm-hmm. It's just, oh, it's so disheartening. And you know, the ones in control of AEW don't like big men, so... I don't, there shouldn't not one more big man needs to go to AEW. Just watch what they do with them. Exactly. Zimbo goes on to say WWE are trying way too hard in trying to turn Solo into Roman Light. <laughs> That's very good, Roman Light. Yeah. I see someone like Solo. <laughs> I see I see someone like Solo give orders to someone like Jacob, and it looks like Starscream trying to give orders to Megatron. <laughs> or Bebop, Turtles reference, trying to intimidate the Shredder. It just doesn't, it just does not work. Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah. He's, he's got to come across. He's got to do, he's got to do something different. If you're not pretty, you got to come across a different way. <laughs> Roman Reigns is pretty. Okay? Everybody can agree. But he's tough. Sokoa is not pretty. He's not an ugly man. No, not at all. But he's not pretty. And he, that's good. He, and yes, he can. But he's so well shaven. <laughs> he's, so, he's so baby smooth all <laughs> over. He's got to get rid of the hair. He's got. He's got to get rid of that hair. I'm just saying. He stepped into a. Let's say he kept the. He keeps the blonde, right? Yeah. Okay. Because he don't want to get rid of that for some reason. I'd be like, I would throw him. I'd be like, bro, see that blonde in your hair? It, it, you know, we do support the color of red. Y you know, that's the 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 lay you got. It's red. That's why we do the red thing. You are not tribal chief material because you can't even represent your own colors. So, you know, and the last one you want leading is Jacob. I don't know, maybe he might be the first. I don't know. The way they're <laughs> almost presenting him is that he's in charge. He just, ah, 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 and they'd be like, we'll get that done tomorrow. He's like, ah, ah, and walk off. And like, what in the hell? Just do everything and then it'll be done. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, uh, I don't know. It's it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. But I would, Solo should grow the facial hair out, have it trimmed up. Don't try to look like Roman. Grow that facial hair out. That shit will change a look for real. All right? Yeah. Samoa's got some hellacious. KG Muto, when he had the thick beard, that's almost kind of how it might grow out. Um, and grow his hair out. Want to keep it shaved on the side? Fine, but let the rest grow. He needs to get the up. red. Get I mean, get the blonde out and have a streak of red, just in case it fucks up your head. You can get rid of that piece of hair, and you move. You don't lose anything. But that's all he got to do. Grow that out. Grow the beard, and you'll be looking like something. He need, but he need, he needs help, and it's probably. Man, his look got a lot to do with it. He's got to do something. He needs to get a stylist to find a look for him because he looks like he's looking for a look for himself and he needs to keep searching. It's not... It's like he's trying to audition for 1980s Hollywood. It's not working. He says, now, I knew that Solo would turn on Paul and attack him. I was waiting on it. I just wonder how long it was going to take. So, you know, Zemo and I clicking on the same cylinder. The man beat up his big brother. So, there is no way, uh, there is no way would he hesitate to attack someone who has known his family for years. Heyman took that table spot pretty well. He bumps better than the elite. <laughs> <laughs> I bumped better than the elite. And I, 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 I bumped some, some, some weeks and weeks ago. But, yeah, it was not cool. 
that was not cool. No. It sucked. But I sold it. <laughs> Didn't have a choice. But I sold it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Triple, H, Triple H finally portrayed uh, Solo as a, vic, uh, as a vicious heel. It still does not change the fact that he has no business leading Gorillas of Destiny and Fatu. Nope, not one. Those three could kick his ass and send him back down to developmental. Yes. They Damn. could kick his Why ass. Why are you so vicious? No, they could kick his ass with promo skill alone. I would give to hear Jacob talk. To hear Tama talk. They would steal the show. Oh, man. They would steal the show. Everybody would be creaming their pants listening to him talk because it's believable. Man, Tama can talk circles around I would say everybody there. Mm -hmm. And Jacob is equal. Mm -hmm. You know? Now, Tungaloa? No. 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 I have never heard him cut a promo. I heard him talk after matches in Japan, but it was not much to listen to. Yeah. So His no. personality is not as grandiose as Thomas. No, his personality is in his moves and how he acted. His personality is on his wrestling sleeve. Not his verbal skills. Yeah. Um, and in the ring. That's what all his, his cousin and first to come out of the ring. <laughs> man. It was some years ago, but <laughs> Gorillas and Destiny was cursing up a storm in it that was ring. them and Ghetto. I don't can't remember who they were wrestling, but, but they were, everybody was cut loose. They didn't hold back a single <laughs> word. It was great. They talked that shit for real. <laughs> they used every curse word you're never supposed to say on TV. It let them all fly but yeah Tama is so good and I just they not gonna use him right nope they're you not, already know that they're not gonna you have to earn your way right. Tama Tonga is a main event person Jacob Fatu is a main event person Tonga Loa is more of I would say intercontinental US title or tag team that's what he's been presented since I've been watching him. Yeah. He might be way above those two, but I will not know. Yeah. So I'm not saying he just outright suck. I just don't know. Let's see. He says Solo is nowhere near ready, but Triple H clearly won't listen to anyone with common sense. In other words, no different from Vince. Yeah. There you go. If more WWE fans will watch Thomas or Jacobs work outside WWE, they would be annoyed that Solo is bossing them around. Even Tonga Loa would be a better choice to lead Bloodline than Umaga 2.0. God Woo. damn. God damn. That's just, dude. But yeah, I can't even, I can't deny that. Oh, yeah. that, why are you so vicious? There's some people out there crying in pain over these words. Nah, man, the truth, the truth. Yeah, it's the truth. I'm not gonna deny I'm it. But you, good man. grief. You know, and for a while I thought maybe I was just hating. Cause it took me a minute to say something. And I didn't haven't watched much of of you watched more than I have, but every time I saw Sako, I was like not feeling it. It just it just, just won't it just, just won't right. It's just not there is just not there like at castle, clash of the castle who had the main event it was um drew Mac mcintyre drew mcintyre that was really my first time seeing them but yeah. i got it you understand yeah. what i'm saying it made yeah. sense yeah i i was picking up what he was putting down i ain't picked up nothing with sakoa yet i just it's <laughs> it's just not there let's see he says WWE are undermining these three just to make Solo look good, but it is not working. And as soon as Roman returns, the fans are going to reject Solo even more. Now, to be fair, Solo is trying, but he is not at that certain level. Not yet. I think Roman will return at SummerSlam and cost Solo his WWE title bout against Cody. Since WWE, is, since WWE are building towards that. He uh, needs to make a stark change. Sokoa does. Remember, I, I uh, that's scary. I, I get it. Yeah, he make a stark change. 
then you and everyone else would be like, well, see, he's doing this instant change and it's not working. It's like, y'all ain't gonna let him win. I, I, I would give it a chance because you make a star change and you gotta, you gotta work it. You gotta build it and you gotta grow it. For example, this is kind of an, not the best example because he's always had that it factor. But like when The Rock won, <laughs> when The Rock won the belt and then he came out talking about his $500 shirts and he was with Vince. Yeah. That was a stark switch. And it worked. Yeah. But like I said, he always had that factor. It would take a little more for something as stark as that to work. But that's what I think. Because everybody seeing him like the henchman for Roman Reigns. Okay, you just seat filling until the dude comes back. You look like this dude. You look like you just keeping it warm. Yeah. He's got to look like he's providing the heat, not just keeping it warm. So I have to make a start change. Yeah. And it's got to be more than that crushed velvet shirt. I, I, I think what he needs to do. Well, I don't know. We have to, I have to see how money in the bank go. But. Yeah, just you got to start killing these top stars. You got to take out Randy Orton first. Because the order of weakest to strongest, how they're built, is Kevin Owens, Cody, and then Randy. Randy ain't got the belt because Randy probably just don't want it. It's like, I don't have the belt. I just want to do stuff and just, you know, I'll retire at some point. But he, he needs to... He needs to be looked upon. Someone he needs to change in such a way where we're or do things in such a way where when you look at him, you like that mother is dangerous. Yeah, he hasn't he hasn't gotten there yet. He hasn't gotten there, and maybe he could get there. And I'm going to reiterate what you said. I don't. I'm not. I'm not shitting on him because I want him to fail. I don't want anything from him. <laughs> I hope that he succeeds, but. I think he's going to have to take some liberties or have some conversations or, or something, but he may not be that creative. Just because you're in that spot doesn't mean that you're creative enough to work it. And some might not have that creativity is the, the office that's like, okay, this is what I want you to do. Yeah. And, and, like, it's, okay. and it's up to the rest of the, think about that, think about how their character is and then be like, no, that's not good. Mm-hmm. And then Triple H should be on the outside, the general looking over the battle and being like, he's got a point. Y'all shouldn't do that, but we can't do what he want to do either. And he should have the wrestling experience by now. But he's only been predominantly in one damn company. Although Triple H has been in multiple others. I saw him in WCW. You know, he was in some other promotions. He had to start off, yeah. But he's, he's WWE bred and born now. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the other stuff, he'd have probably left that. He's like, yeah, I know where I started off and I know what I've done, but this is WWE. I'm going to worry about that. So he's not going to do right by Solo if there is a way to do right by Solo mm -hmm. because it's the WWE way. That's why they use WWE Universe because there is nothing else. And the fact that even mentioned outside places it's like they're opening doors, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. Um, and Zemo ends by saying, every time Cedric snaps his fingers, I keep thinking that one of you started watching West Side Story. <laughs> he put a C in my name. It's okay. He, he does it. I know. But whenever I see it spelled S-E-D-R-I-C-K, I'm like, that's Cedric. <laughs> Instead of and yes, yeah, snapping them fingers, because that's what he's picking on. He Living ain't seen on the West Side Story. He ain't never seen West Side Story. Stop it. <laughs> She's living Stop like it. a movie star. Stop it. What? <laughs> I'm gonna find something to throw at you. Don't be throwing stuff at me. I'm wearing orange. I got on blue, and I'm gonna still find something. That blue belongs to me. You don't wear it, cause you keep wearing it. That is not my problem. All right. <laughs> okay. Just, just know I love you. 
You want to wear my shirts, honey? I'll no, I want to wear your shirts. You can wear one of my shirts. Nope. I want to wear mine that you wear. <laughs> That's what I want to do. be even. <laughs> okay, you can have this shirt and I'll go put on one of your others. How about that? <sighs> I am getting up the other one that we just done. It's been ready for a while. <laughs> Y'all see what I'm working with here? You? I'm offering these good deals. I and get see, no cooperation. Ray Fuba Huba Extra says, I like it. Thanks, Ray Fuba Huba. You know? Um... No, nope. well, that was the last one. That's not this one. Hold on, my bad. Let me go ahead and boop, boop. All righty. So, that's going to do it, y'all. I hope you enjoyed. This has been about 40 minutes. Good grief. So, this has been Cedric and for CRS and Commentary, answering viewers. I want y'all to be cool, be, able to be chill, and be safe so that we can see you next time.